Okay, here we go. Uh, what you're going to do is create a portrait picture, like we talked about, where you're going to superimpose two images, one on top of the other. So I did a couple in the previous two blocks, which I'll just quickly show you. So this is the first one. And so what I did is I created a layer with just the frame. And then I added in the tree, and I did a few adjustments to it, which I'll show you. And then I added in a face and tried to blend it in both color-wise and size-wise. Okay? So that's just the face. Right, so uh, I did it a couple times um, just uh, as a demonstration. Same basic idea, just a slightly different look to it. Right, so what you're going to do is go File, New, and Blank File to create a new file. And the size is going to be US paper, 8.5 by 11. So we'll do a fairly large one, pretending we're going to print it out and put it in a frame. Okay, of course, you name it, last name, first name, and we'll call it portrait. Okay, so once I have my frame, what I want to do is just create a, a little bit of a background. So I'm going to show you a couple ways that you can, or a couple tools you can use to do that. The first one is going to be a selection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of estimate where I want to put my frame. So I'm going to start in one spot and I'm going to drag it down to the other. Right? Now it's a pretty good, fairly close estimate, but I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to perfect it. So with my zoom tool, I zoom in, I've got my rulers set to pixels and then what I'm going to do is go up to select and transform selection like we've done before. It gives me this bounding box and then I'm just going to drag it using the ruler and if you look over on the side I'm going to go to 100. So you can see a little dotted line right near the 100 line and I'm going to drop it there. Same thing over here I'll go over to 100 using the top ruler and there's a little dotted line there. I'll scroll over and again I'll have to do a little bit of math. So it's at 2550 so I need to go to 2450 and then down at the bottom it goes to 3250 and I'm already at 3150. No sorry it goes to 3300 and so I'll go to 3200. Okay, then I hit my check mark to accept it and I'll zoom back out again. Or I can just of course hit fit screen. Okay, so now I've got my bounding box. Then I'm going to fill it in. So I want to do two different things. I want to fill in the mat or the background. And then what I'm going to do to be able to fill in this area is I'm going to go to select inverse and what that does is it changes it from selecting all this area that I just filled in gray to selecting this area from the edge of the gray to the edge of the photograph. It just switches the area you're selecting. And now I can go to a different color and fill that in and I have my frame. Now what I can do, I'm going to select deselect this and you can do these effects anytime that you want. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock this just by double clicking on it, naming it frame. And when you rename the background layer, which by default is locked, it unlocks it. I did that because I want to use layer styles. I want to make my border look a little bit more three dimensional. So I'm going to use bevel and I can drag this slider up. And I'm going to use Glow, and I'm going to choose Inner. I'm going to change this to a nice light blue, and I'm going to drag that. And you can see it goes all the way into the gray because it's all one color, but I'm going to just stop it about there. Okay, so I have a basic frame. 
Okay, so selection tool, I used inverse to switch it and transform to transform it. And of course, use my rulers to do some measuring. Now I'm going to put in a couple of pictures. So I'm going to go to this one. And the first thing I'm going to do, see how I can't use layer styles? Because it's locked. What I'm going to do is rename it. And then I'm going to do a, well, you know what? I think I'm going to do it after. But if I wanted to, I'd have to unlock it and then go to my style settings. Okay, I'll do it after so I can match the colors in my frame. So I do select all, edit copy, and then I go to my document and I go edit paste. And the nice thing about it is that it pastes it right in the middle. So now I'm going to play around with this. And the, where we're going to go is to image, enhance, sorry, enhance, and then lighting and adjust color. You can do these auto ones as well, but you have more control when you go here. So I'll, we'll, we'll start with levels. And this basically will adjust the darks, the mid-tones, and the, the light tones, or the highlights. So basically really dark, really light, and somewhere in the middle. And I can drag these sliders. So if I drag this one up on the left, the dark one, I'll gradually darken the picture all the way to, to this if I wanted to. But I'm just going to darken it a little bit. I can adjust the mid-tones lighter or darker, kind of in between. And if I want to make it a little lighter or darker, I can drag this one. So I've darkened it up a little bit. I go back to enhance. Uh, I go back to lighting and brightness and contrast. And that's similar. I can make it brighter or darker. And if I adjust the contrast, which is the difference between darks and lights, I can uh, play around with that as well. So what I'm trying to do is make it a little bit darker. Then I can go to shadows and highlights. And again, lighten the shadows. Hey, that looks kind of good, actually. So it'll take those really dark areas and lighten them up, but it'll leave the light colors. Uh, darken the highlights. So it'll take those light colors and darken them, which is kind of nice. It'll leave the dark colors dark, and it'll darken the lights. And then you've got your mid-tones. So essentially what this allows me to do is take these really bright areas and darken them with this one. Or the really dark areas and lighten them with this one. Okay, now you can leave your picture as is, but I would really like you to play around with those. Then let's go to adjust color. Got a whole bunch of them. The two I think I'll focus on remove color. Does just that. That's how I got the black and white picture. And I'll just undo that for now. And I can also go to adjust hue and saturation. And this allows me to both turn it into a grayscale picture or black and white. And then I can adjust the darkness here. So I want to keep a little bit of color in it, but I want to kind of take some out. And then I can play around with the hues and saturations. Now I did a blue frame. So if I wanted to kind of keep that blue theme, I could drag it down. So I'm getting rid of the reds and yellows and just keeping the blues. If I drag it up, I get rid of the blues. You can kind of play around with it like that. So I think I'll leave it there. Okay, so with your pictures, try these two out. Play around with them. Adjust your picture a little bit. The last part is the face. So I'll use that. And what I'm going to do is this time I'm just going to select my face. So I'm going to drag, and I'm going to start in the top left corner above. I don't start right here because I'll miss part of my face. I'm going to start above with the elliptical one. Drag down, and you kind of see it adjusts as it goes. And I'm going to select that. Now, 
Um, a couple things. Notice up here under feather, it says 100. What that's going to do is gonna, it's going to give me a soft edge instead of just cutting it off. Then I'm going to go to select. Again, transform selection. Uh, I want it a little bit bigger on all sides. So you don't have to be perfect right away. I'll drag this down a bit. And I am then going to go select. Hang on. Don't forget the green check mark. I'm going to go select inverse. And I'm going to unlock my layer. Why? Because I don't want any color on this area. I'm going to delete this part. If I left it locked, then it would turn red. Let me show you that. If I hit delete, it replaces it with this red. And I don't want it for this um, instance. That might be a cool effect, but that's not what I want this time. So I'm going to unlock it. Click OK. And then I'll hit delete. And you see the soft edge there? It gradually phased me out into nothing. And that's basically what I want. Now I'll go select all, like we did before, edit copy. I'm going to take it over to the picture, which was this one. And I'm going to go edit paste. Now it's a little bit small. So I'm going to go to this. Now before I went to transform selection, that just changes the dotted line, the bounding box, the marching ants as we call them sometimes. So this time I'm going to go to image transform and transform the picture. And I'm going to match it with the size of that knot in the tree. And I can move it up and down. I can resize it. Once I'm satisfied, I'm going to accept it. Now, if I want to, I can take my eraser and I can choose a soft uh, brush here. So uh, I'm going to go fairly large. I'll go 200. It's called soft round. And so when it erases, it actually does that kind of blending effect around the eraser, just like my feather did. So I'm going to erase some of this blue up here because it's fairly bright and you can see it's not completely erasing it it's kind of gently erasing it I'm gonna erase some of the red shirt so you can kind of play around with it like that as well and then over here this is the last part this is how you're gonna blend it you have this thing called opacity and you could put your mouse over top of the word and slide it down and it will gradually make it see through all the way to, to almost nothing or nothing. So I'm going to go down to about 40. I can also click on this arrow and drag it. And I can also double click in here and type in 40 and it will go to 40%. Now it looks a little bit off so now I'm going to go maybe I'll up here to adjust color and I'm going to drag it up and down just like I did my other layer so I matched it I click OK I if I still want to I can make it bigger so I'm gonna actually free transform it make it a little bit bigger again maybe not quite that big I can also distort it. I don't have to with this. You're, you're being a little, somewhat creative, so I can distort it a little bit if I want to. And there's my picture. Okay, so you can always fine tune it, adjust it if I wanted to make it a little less apparent that it's uh, or sorry, decrease the transparency in the face a little bit, I can always adjust it. Okay? And there's my final picture.
So that's the process that I would like you to go through.